Mike D'Antoni should stand in a public forum today and issue a public apology to Kobe Bryant. The nerve, the unmitigated gall, the disgusting comments that this man has made. I, I, I'm sorry, I don't want to use this word early in the morning, but Mike D'Antoni, who the hell do you think you are? You are talking about Kobe Bryant here, a fan who happens to be a five-time world champion, who happens to be one of the greatest players we have ever seen, a former league MVP, a former NBA Finals MVP, one of the greatest players to have ever played this game, who has done it all wearing purple and gold, and you who just arrived in town barely over 500, 40 and 32 on the season, struggling with the number 22 ranked defense, squeaking into the playoffs at an eight, as an eighth seed, you have the nerve to sit there and call Kobe Bryant a fan. This is the kind of disrespect, and it is so disrespectful what he did that I'm sorry, it mandates a public apology, a public apology. Who do you think you are? Think that, let's put this in perspective here. You get the job, and let's, let's, let's just backtrack and rewind this and call it what it is, because I'm tired of holding back. I think I've held back enough. You look at Mike... You haven't held back oh, at yes, all. Yes, I have. <laughs> yes, I have. Let's put this in perspective. Mike D'Antoni is a man that averaged 58 wins a season in Phoenix in four complete years. He's no scrub as a coach. But at the same time, there is, the, there is nothing ahead. about him that you associate with greatness. Mm -mm. The reality is, is that he's got some things to learn. But more importantly than anything else, I got news for you. And it needs to be said right here, right here over these airwaves right now. Mike D'Antoni, one of the biggest things he needs to learn is cultivating relationships with players. Mm. You come to New York City, you don't want Carmelo Anthony. You alienate Carmelo Anthony before he even arrives, by the time he arrives, okay? And then ultimately that leads to yours, because 18 and 24 last year, ultimately getting you booted out the door. By the way, Mike Whitson for the New York Knicks is, is like... 45, almost 50 games over 500 since Mike D'Antoni left. All right, so you got that relationship mm -hmm. issue, okay? Mm -hmm. You come to Los Angeles, you start the job. This is literally and factually correct. You start the job on a Tuesday night for the Los Angeles Lakers. That Friday against Memphis, you bench Powell Gasol. You do. A two-time champion, one of the most versatile big men in the game. Not yeah. only do you bench him, but you disrespect him by talking about his lack of production. As if you've had a tick. You haven't even had a chance to put, on, put a tic-tac in your mouth before <laughs> you sit there and insult this man who's brought two championships to L.A. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then all of a sudden you talk about how, well, you know what, we got to cater to our franchise player. Then near the end of the season, you alienate my, Dwight Howard to the point where he's sitting there saying, could you throw the ball inside? And you dismiss him after dismissing Powell Gasol, which, by the way, early in the season, you dismissed Kobe because some of the suggestions that Kobe was making, you basically were saying to him, you play our coach. Mm -hmm. You want to do things your way, even though your way has not proven to work on a championship level. And then last but not least, here we come with Kobe. Do I think that Kobe's tweets were a bit too much? I'm here to tell you, absolutely, I do. There gets to a point in time where it's like, all right, chill out, because you know what, a little bit too much tweeting. You might be making the players uncomfortable. You never know what kind of residual effect that could yep. have or whatever. But it is clear that he didn't look at it that way at the time. He's just looking at his team, doing what he always does, and he's home, bored to death, and it's driving him crazy that he couldn't play. So that's all. So that's why I applaud him coming out with the tweet after. You know. You know what? I, I didn't mean anything by it. I need to chill. But that's entirely separate and apart from Mike D'Antoni because Mike D'Antoni doesn't mind at all how he comes across. It's like everybody is a hindrance. Everybody is in an annoyance. He wants to do what he wants to do. That's why he lost his job in Phoenix because Steve Kerr, by the way, a five-time champion and an executive that knew, knew something about the game of basketball I and about winning championships, had the temerity, yeah. had the unmitigated goal skip to sit there and say, could you take Tom Thibodeau as your defensive mm -hmm. specialist? Could you do that, please? I think he knows what he's doing. No, I don't want him. So you you end up relocating, uprooting yourself and your family simply because you didn't want to bring on a guy that was recognized then and now has proven to be the brightest defensive mind in the game of basketball. So you alienate that portion. Then you go to New York, you do it with Carmelo. Now you're in L.A., you do it with Gasol, you do it with Dwight Howard, and now you do it with Kobe Bryant? Kobe? Bottom line is this. Who does this man think he is?
enough's enough. This has to stop. This man needs to issue a public apology to Kobe Bryant today. And if he doesn't do it, Laker Nation should be sitting there saying, it's time for us to move on. Think he will? I think so. Does he have too much pride? He's got a lot of pride. Lot. He's got too much pride, but he ain't stupid. I strongly suggest to Mike D'Antoni, today he needs to issue an apology to Kobe Bryant. A fan? Kobe Bryant's the face of that franchise. Kobe Bryant's a five-time champion, mm -hmm. who, by the way, at age 34, all right, having compiled 54,031 minutes, you were still using for 45 minutes a game in the month of April. You still used for 38.6 minutes per game this season, which was second in the league, tied with Damian Lillard, and second only to Luau Dang of the Chicago Bulls. He was a fan then when you were using him and running him into the ground at age 34 in his 17th season. Was he a fan a week ago? Two weeks ago? But he's a fan now, right? Mm -hmm. It's very disrespectful. It's very disrespectful, and somebody needs to say something about it. I'm saying something about it. He owes Kobe Bryant a public apology today. Today. Not tomorrow. Not before game two. Today. You have now spewed issues all over the Bristol countryside. Uh -huh. They're hanging from the rafters, mm -hmm. and I'm going to have to pick one to start with. Go ahead. I'm going to pick what you keep saying about Mike D'Antoni, that he, he is a good basketball coach. I disagree. I think he is being exposed with the Los Angeles Lakers. I see no system. I see no plan. I see no strategy. I see one mistake after another, including one yesterday, before Preach. I get into my, my big rant here. <laughs> yes. Why? With Steve Nash coming off back and hamstring, do you force Started. him, force him back into the starting lineup when he's kind of chop-stepping around, he's not sure, and he admitted after the game, I'm struggling, I'm out of rhythm, I'm off, I'm not right. Yeah. Who had carried that team, carry, yeah. in the last two games? Steve, Steve Blake. Blake. Right. 23 and 24, and in the first quarter, Steve Blake gets one shot while Nash takes five shots. Not good, not right. What's he doing? He is reaching back for the glory of seven seconds or less in Phoenix. Remember, that's how he made his mystique. That's right. how he got the next job, because the great Jack McCallum did a book on seven seconds or less. He revolutionized the game of basketball. We play no more defense. We want them to score quickly because we're going to score even more quickly in seven seconds. Am I right about that? That's right. You are okay. absolutely right. All correct. that is being exposed. You forced Steve Nash in, and as soon as I saw that, I said, Lakers are in trouble. Steve Blake doesn't get the basketball enough. He's, he's hot. He's, he's on ready. fire. Yes. You know, you need to play inside, outside with Dwight and Powell. You need somebody to make a couple threes. They go three for 15 yeah. from three. And when Blake finally got going, it was too late because Ginobili had happened. And once Ginobili happened, which shocked me, ball game. Dagger three at the end of the third quarter. Now back to what happened after the game. In Hollywood, you know this better than anyone, image is everything. Everything that comes out of your mouth is going to be dissected at that post-game podium. Right. Dan Tony has no edit button at all. He just spouts. He just reacts to what somebody says on the fly. And you're right. It comes off as astonishingly disrespectful to one of the greatest players who ever played.